Hello class! How is your day going? I hope everything is going well for you. It's me again, Sir Noel, as your virtual teacher, helping you to clarify the third quarter business finance topics. The week 2 topic is all about financial markets and financial institutions. For this lesson, we will differentiate and identify the types of financial markets, financial institutions, and financial instruments. To begin with, let us define these important basic terms, financial markets, financial institutions, and financial instruments. Financial markets are organized forums in which the suppliers and users of various types of funds can make transactions directly. They act as a conduit for funds to flow from lenders to borrowers or savers to spenders. Financial markets can be distinguished along two major dimensions, primary versus secondary markets and money versus capital markets. Primary markets are markets in which users of funds, for example, corporations, raise funds through new issues of financial instruments such as stocks and bonds. The individual who buys securities has assets, whereas the person who sells them has liabilities. Secondary markets are like used car markets. Secondary markets are markets for currently outstanding securities, referred to as secondary securities. These securities were previously bought and owned and are now being resold either by initial investors or those purchased in the secondary market. Money markets cover markets for short-term debt instruments, usually issued by companies with high credit standing. They consist of a network of institutions and facilities for trading debt securities with one year or less maturity. Examples of money market instruments include cash management bills, T-bills, bankers' acceptances, letters of credit, and negotiable certificates of deposits. Capital markets, on the other hand, are markets for long-term securities. Long-term securities are either debt securities such as notes, bonds, mortgages, leases, or equity securities such as stocks. Examples of capital market instruments include stocks, bonds, long-term negotiable certificates of deposits, and mortgage-backed securities. Next, financial institutions are intermediaries that channel the savings of individuals, businesses, and governments into loans or investments. They are firms that bridge the gap between the surplus units or investors, lenders, and deficit units or borrowers. They channel funds from lenders to borrowers. Examples of financial institutions are commercial banks, insurance companies, where they pull payments and invest the proceeds in a variety of securities until funds are required to settle policyholder claims. We also have mutual funds, where shareholders become the owners of the portfolio of the account, pension funds, and other institutions such as SSS, GSIS, UITF, and credit unions. The BSP or the Banco Central ng Pilipinas supervises all financial institutions. The BSP is responsible for overseeing the country's monetary system and policies, controlling the country's money supply, and setting interest rates. Financial instruments are real or virtual documents representing legal agreements involving some sort of monetary value. This can be debt securities like corporate bonds or equity instruments 
like shares of stock. Debt instruments generally have fixed returns due to fixed interest rates. Equity instruments generally have varied returns based on the performance of the issuing company. Returns from equity instruments come from either the dividends or stock price appreciation. There are two common types of corporate stocks, common and preferred stock. Common stock ownership always carries voting rights. The nature of the rights and the specific issues shareholders are entitled to vote on can vary considerably from one company to another. If the company's growth is sparring, the common stockholders will benefit from that growth. Holders of common stock are the real owners of the company. I hope this video has helped you analyze and answer your modified assessment. Happy learning!